Okay. Um, okay, so we're seeing it all over the interwebs. We're seeing it in some people's hands right now. Fender Jazzmaster is kind of reigning supreme on the rise up to the trend. Thank God people are catching on. <laughs> That's the newest. It's ama it's the, I've never seen one. It's amazing. Shut up. It's Chris Stapleton. You, you it's all your, Chris Stapleton. He, he's a good indie artist, isn't he? That great underground artist. He's like an underground. Chris Stapleton. Yeah, that's another inside uh, joke. But, yeah, um, but anyways. No, it is funny. So like the Jazzmaster, I've been a fan of the Jazzmaster for decades at this point. Yeah. Like, I, I think the Jazzmaster is cool. So I, I love the neck pickup. I think the body looks cool as hell. I like how it sort of jangles when you play it a little bit sometimes. Jingle jangle. <laughs> Not in a positive way. It's sort of weird. I like it. It sounds like I'm playing a vintage car. And like because that trim system sometimes does weird noises. Um, but no, I, I've always liked them. I think they're they're cool. They're alt looking, but they have a different voice than the Les Pauls, the Strats, the Tellys, the SGs, three thirty fives. Sort of the standard buckets of the guitars. Now, has this ever happened before? <gasps> oh my God! In the trends of guitar love. Well, you know, we said this this morning. Like we, this came up. Why the Jazzmaster is the guitar of the future? It was some some article Derek pulled up, right? And I was like, well. It's it's already done that. We've already done this cycle. God knows how how many times. But Sonic Youth did this a long time ago. Well, like I can remember being younger, and it was all of a sudden like, oh, Fender offsets. Oh my God, that's the way. And it was amazing. And nobody wanted a Strat. No, I won't say nobody because someone always wants a Strat. Someone always wants a Telly. But in, in the Strats trendy, lost the luster they a did, little bit man. in that early two thousands, late nineties thing. Well, even if you like, you know, I was in that sort of CCM. Uh, like the you know praise and worship kind of kind of stuff for a I didn't while. Know. What, what does CCM um, mean? Contemporary Christian music. Okay, sorry, I just lost me there. I was like, like Crosby still that was mash? a thing. Um, but you know, so so some of the first bigger gigs I played were were with with artists doing that stuff, and uh, you know, nobody in the churches wanted wanted strats at all, like dead, you know. And tellies were fine or whatever, but the offsets were the big thing. And then it rolled around, and guess what people wanted. Gretches. Telecasters. <laughs> they didn't want Gretches, and they stood it to still do. But then it was like you had to have a Tele. Tele was everything. And like strats weren't cool. And then some, I forget which player it was, like released this thing in the summer tour, and he was like playing a strat, and it was like, oh my God, have you guys heard of the strat? <laughs> we should try these things. <laughs> this is so what Jonathan's saying is this is very cyclical. It's all cyclical. Uh, I mean, what it is funny because like it, I'm just gonna like bounce back to the strat for a minute. Cause like if you think about it. That instrument does everything you really kind of need. That's the Swiss Army knife right there. You can get sort of in that tele range. You definitely got the Strat thing. You got kind of a little jazz mastery. You get a little bit Jaguar-y if you sort of bite it. It's, it. it's got sort of a touch of each of the fenders. It really does do pretty much everything you want. In fact, like I, it's funny. I'm getting ready to go on the gig this weekend. Gross. And normally I take my Telecaster. But I just got my Strat all set up. And it's sounding amazing. I've played it the last few gigs, and I'm like, God, this is amazing. So I'm, 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 I'm myself in the Strat phase right now. Well, you now. know me. I, I'm, um, I think the Strat's the greatest electric yeah, guitar ever made. So like, it's that. I sort of stop there and like end there as far as versatility and pure sonic and sound and playability. Yeah. And like, I just think it's just a great instrument. And I think it's funny when we go through cycles in CCM, as you call it, or other things. Like, they discover these new things because it gets trend set a lot of times. But then you. If you just had a Strat, you could do everything you need. And you'd be like, no, no, I gotta have that Gretsch. I'm like, you don't have to have that Gretsch. I love well, the there's Well, there's always the outliers, right? Who, even when it's not the trend, the guy's still playing a Strat, the guy's still playing a Tele. You know what I mean? There'll they'll always be guys who are diehard Jazzmaster or Jaguar. I mean, I when that trend came around, I had a Jaguar. I had a couple Jaguars for a while. And, which I love uh, a Jaguar. But let's bounce back to the Jazzmaster. Yeah, Jazzmaster. The Jazzmaster, why would this be a guitar of the future in some ways? It does have some unique capabilities that it it has a weird voice yes i said because it had the the neck pickup is warm but right. it's a little spanky the bridge piss up, pickup piss up the pickup <laughs> is pretty bright um i think for what it looks like psychologically i think it's going to be different sounding yeah but then the the tone stack that it has in there that you can sort of the different circuit it it's actually more usable for today's players than i think it was intended it's intended use what is agreed like for a jazz player, it's just kind of a mud factory. Right. But with a player that's going to develop some unique sort of tone, like not, not kill switches, but when you want to have immediate volume drops and you go into a different tone stack with your pedal setup, it can really be a magical instrument to play with. Well, you know, we're in that kind of thing right now. The kind of like cool, like clean tone, prog, rock, mm -hmm. tapping with all your fingers and 
you know, making awesome sounds. It just it just fits that. I mean, there's there's space in there sonically for you to do all those things. Well, just um, having that option, just like if I'm playing on the Jazz Master and I have my, my pedal setting for one thing and then when I, when I hit the next pedal selector and I pop that, that switch up, I neat. can have an entirely different pass of tone. Like, which is like, so it's all, it's like almost doubling my tonal options with a flip of a switch that was invented in the 50s. It's like Leo foresaw it. Which, you know, it's funny because we have all these things coming out now, these do everything guitars. What are the do everything guitars? Well, you know, like you, everything coil splits and you can oh, do yeah. series and you can do parallel and there's a 20 way switch and, you know what I mean? Not really, but, but you know what I mean? Like, my, my brain is sort of like, <laughs> like, I just, oh I just... <laughs> and you find two sounds you like and that's what you, all you do. Um, I, I just want to shut down entirely when you said that there. <laughs> right. But I mean, you know, Leo sort of laid it out really well from Even, the beginning. <laughs> I just got to stick on this 20 way for a minute. Even the four way <laughs> switch for a, um, what do you call it? Four way like switch for a telly just is confusing. Like, what, where is my selector? I, one of my one of my students, who's who's you know a friend, did that in one of his tellies the other day, and I thought, man, that is really cool, and it does sound good. But I was like, man, I'm so it's so burned into my brain, the three positions, and I don't have to think about it. You know what I mean? Where I want to go. Same with Strat, right in the five way. Yeah, which I'm sure it was, maybe it was that way when they first started putting five way switches in Strats. You think like, there were people who were like, oh, this will, this fad will never, it'll never last. God, I never thought about that. That's a really funny thing. This is garbage. Why would we do this? Why would we need two extra positions? By God, these are useless. These no, it's um, no, I, I think I like that the jazz mash is being sort of crowned as the the new it guitar, right? It's it's cause it's funny to us because we've seen this happen before. It happened back, happened in the '90s. It, it happened again in the early 2000s, sort of for a bit. And now it's happening again in the 2020s. Well, I mean, you know, I, I can just, this seems like a billion years ago, I went through like a Elvis Costello and like Wilco kind of phase. And I was like, God, I have to have a jazz mat. And I've never owned one. I never ended up getting one, but it's just funny. They, now we're, we're kind of back. Well, you see them there. making all this cool, like they're sort of soundscape cats too. Yeah. They got great pedals and great sort of soundscapes they're creating. Yep. And like, it must be the jazz master that's doing that. Yes. Not the $10,000 worth of cool pedals. Mini computer pedals. And, and amps. <laughs> but uh, it, it kind of it has, it has the ability to do more than I think folks have used it for. And that's why I'm hoping it's sort of resurgence in popularity and growth has that. And, you know, you know, it's obviously it was never taken in by the jazz players, but you do have guys like Chris Stapleton playing it. Yep. That it's not sort of typical to his genre of music. No, it's true. Which but is, but it, it fits what he does so well, right? Like he he's got this weird thing. You know, he's got a sound with a little, you know, brown brown uh, face fender or whatever, and yes. and you know, his his jazz master. It's weird. It's weird that he's carved out a tone with that. Yeah, so. well, I mean, if you haven't heard of him before, he's, he's sort of on the up and coming. He's an independent. Check out, he has this song, You Have to Dig, Tennessee Whiskey. It's, uh, it's amazing. Another long story. <laughs> Inside jokes, I'm we're, sorry. We're not dumping Inside on baseball. Uh, Chris Stapleton. We, we no, like we Chris Stapleton. It's just a, it's Trust just, me, we're not it's, dumping again, on. inside, inside it's, joke that we can't share. It's called Inside Baseball, right? Inside Baseball. Can we do that? I don't know yes. what that means exactly, but it yeah, sounds cool. That's right. It makes me sound like I'm hip and know You're my sports so talk. So hip. My feed and my like sort of interweb feeds have like sports stuff on it because I do like baseball stuff sometimes. It's a problem. I think that's kind of it though. So hopefully, let us know your thoughts. If you see, if you see this in your little trends and your circles of where you are, if it's in your CCM, contemporary church. I don't know if that's a thing. I don't know if that's a. a, a, a I don't know if that's what you call it. Or um, I don't um, know either. Or, or if you worship. see it anywhere out in your in your little universe, if you're seeing them coming out more, if it's in your, if you're working the shops, if you see it more there, we're just curious. Because yeah. we live in our little bubble and we don't see much. We just stay back here and talk about guitars. Just grind away. And don't get out very often. We're like Keebler elves of guitar shops. The taller. Sit, sit in our tree. That'd be cool. Do I our guess, work. I live in a tree house kind of. Keebler cookies. Kind of you do. Weirdly enough. I guess, yeah. Therapy's coming soon. Oh, and I think the Paw Patrol movie's around the corner. Is it? Yeah. It's coming out soon. Live too. action. Live at, well, no, that'd be so cool. <laughs> How they make those animals drive those crazy little cars? Oh, with airplanes it's, and it's not, helicopters. I, I can't, I mean, I'm gonna go see the theater. I love it. Talk about Tuesday, but. Paw Patrol. I love it. But um, but there is, there's an SNL skit on it that's pretty funny about, it's funny to me, because I like, my kids don't quite think it's funny, but like, it's just town people complain. It's like, why, why do we not have like real paramedics? Like. Like John died because like this, a dog came in. They can't do anything. I was like, like, why do we spend millions and millions on these dogs? It's a horrible. So you say idea. this kid must be a billionaire. 
I mean, like, the kid like, might be a secret agent too. Who knows? I don't know. He's a player. Why would you let a kid be in charge of it? Of, right. Makes no the sense. mayor's like on that the note. The mayor does have a chicken in her purse. <laughs> Uh, Let the jazz masters Chicoletta. rule forever. Chicoletta. Chicoletta. And what's his other guy's name? Mayor Humdinger. <laughs> um, it's a whole different conversation there. Oh. But anyways, that's fine. Well, Thank I'm going to go home. I'm going to cut it out, as Joey once said in Full House. Love that. Uh, thanks wonderful. for joining us. Hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. Click like, subscribe. Hit the old day. And as always, peace be with you.